So it's important to remember, meritocracy as a word was invented by an Englishman in the 1960s. And it was meant to be, um, he thought of it as a really, really bad idea. That is, what he was, he wrote a little novel, and the novel was about how bad a world would be if the world were organized so that everybody was treated according to what somebody thought were their merits. And you can see right from the start that really the whole point of meritocracy, the whole point of treating people according to their merits, is precisely to reward some and, 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 and punish others. But if you think about it this way, in America, the jobs, we have a Bureau of Labor Statistics that predicts what kind of jobs there will be for people 10, 20 years down the road. The fastest growing job today in America is what we call home health care aid. That's someone who comes to your house, helps take care of you if you're old, who helps you get to the bathroom. And that. In America, those people make about $19,500 a year. You cannot live on $19,500 a year. The good jobs, the jobs you go to college for, those jobs are not increasing. The jobs that are increasing are these bad jobs. So suppose you have a completely meritocratic society, a society where everybody, people who do best on the exam, on the tests, they become doctors and lawyers, they make a lot of money. The people who get two or three points lower, they get to go uh, uh, change people's bedpans for $19,500 a year. What you have is a society in which the vast majority of people have bad jobs that are badly paid jobs that, and, and with, with no health protections themselves, but they're being told, don't worry about it. It's totally fair because you've got two points lower than this other guy who's now a lawyer and making $600,000 a year. So you want to say, that doesn't create a more just society. That just goes back to what we were talking before. All that does is make the people who are making a lot of money feel virtuous, because after all, they deserve the money. They did two points better on the test, and makes the people who are changing bedpans for $19,000 a year feel like they too deserved it. My own view is that no one will ever feel they deserve that. And they're right, they don't deserve that. A just society is not a society that awards everybody according to some idea of their merits. A just society is a society that creates more equality for everybody in some respects, regardless of their merits. One of the things that's important to see, and this again is more true in the US than elsewhere, but is also increasingly true in France, and has been true in the United Kingdom, and even in Germany, is that this entire commitment to diversity um, and the sense that the only form of justice that mattered was anti-discrimination has taken place during a period in which um, economic inequality has grown tremendously. If you look at any of the numbers, you will see that the highest point in American history of economic inequality was in the 1920s, late 1920s. Now that's been exceeded today. Mm -hmm. So what you have is a discourse which says that social justice consists entirely in trying to make sure that no one's the victim of discrimination because of their race or their sexuality or their gender, and that that discourse of social justice completely ignores the fact that an increasing number of people are in fact the victims of inequality. Indeed, in the U.S. since about 1980, people of the majority population is poorer than it once was. So on the one hand you want to say, look, the good news is that there's much less discrimination. On the other hand you want to say, the bad news is that there's much more economic inequality and in fact that there's even more poverty. Hmm. A lot of the problems around diversity and anti-discrimination have sort of circulated around the question of, of stereotyping, racial, ethnic, even gender stereotyping. But you know, from my point of view, the great advantage of the notion of class is that it takes the question of how you think about others and it makes it irrelevant. So okay, you're a woman, I'm a man. Supposing I actually think that you're somehow inferior because you're a woman. Supposing I think that you shouldn't be able to do certain kinds of jobs because you're a woman. Supposing I have all these bad stereotypes about women. What the notion of class does is say, and what the notion of equality of class says, is it doesn't matter how I feel about you or how you feel about me. It's not a question of how we look at each other. We're not looking simply to respect each other more. We're not looking simply to think better of each other. That you 
as a member of this society, have a right to a living wage in this society. Whether you're a woman, whether you're beautiful or not beautiful, whether you're brilliant or not brilliant, you have a right to a kind of support that will make it possible for you to be an active citizen in society. So from my standpoint, the great advantage of a real effort to produce equality of class would be to render this question of stereotyping, to render the question of respect, to render the question of how we feel about each other much less relevant. You know, in the end, if I'm, if I'm poor and you're rich, I don't want your respect, I want your money. And that's more important. Mm.